Hi Disruptors, welcome back to our From Zero to Hero video series. As always, my name is Francisco Costa and today we are going to talk about architecture in OutSystems. Now that we know some of the basics of what OutSystems can do, we need to understand where everything that we develop will fit. Like building a house, everything has its purpose and its correct place. Your knowledge on architecture is a big part in distinguishing yourself from a zero to a hero. On this video, we will focus on the most superficial part of architecture, so a lot more concepts will need to be understood and practiced as we move to more complex projects. With this in mind, let's get started. Up until this point, we have been programming all our lessons in a single module. This was just a practical approach. This is not how we build applications correctly. On this episode, we will overview architecture in OutSystems and move our current elements into their correct place. The first step is looking at the architecture canvas. The architecture canvas is an OutSystems architecture tool to help you make your design simple. It promotes the correct abstraction of reusable microservices and the correct isolation of the distinct functional modules. The canvas is divided into layers and sublayers. For the latest OutSystems version, that is version 11 for you, there are three layers, the end user, core and foundation layers. These will define the most abstract part of your application. On the end user layer, you should place your screens. On the core layer, you should have your encapsulated logic, an abstraction of your integrations, your data models and core web blocks. On the foundation layer, you should have your theme, generic patterns and service integration. As the name indicates, it is the base of your application, the foundation. This is where the most reusable elements will be placed. Now, each layer has its own sub-layers to better abstract your concepts. The end user layer has only one sub-layer and it's also called the end user. This was an easy one, okay? I'll give this one for free. This is where we will place our interface modules. The core layer has four sublayers: API, core widgets, composite logic, and core services. As mentioned, the core layer has our modules containing reusable services and actions built around business concepts and export logic from our entities. On the API, we expose an API with our core services. It is very important to focus on the expose part since we can consume or expose APIs and the sublayer that we do each one of these are different. On the core widgets, we place the module containing our web blocks associated with business logic. On the composite logic, we encapsulate reusable business logic or logic to synchronize data. The last core sublayer is the core service and this is where we create our data model and we connect the business rules with the integrations that we did on our foundation layer. The foundation layer has three sub-layers, style guide, foundation service, and library. On the foundation layer, we have non-functional requirements, so a module whose concepts are reusable in any business context. On the style guide, we have reusable UI patterns, themes, and theme templates. On the foundation service, we have integration services where we consume APIs as a first layer of abstraction in out systems. Last but not least, we have on the library, reusable libraries and plugins. This canvas will help make our applications more scalable, allow for an easier maintenance of our applications, promote reusability and improve our application lifecycle. Alongside the canvas, we also have rules that we must respect to have a working architecture. There are a total of seven rules regarding OutSystems. We must not have upwards references. This means a module from the foundation layer must not consume elements from the upward layers, in this case, from the end user or core layers. If you are not respecting this rule, it means that your concepts are not properly placed or encapsulated we must not have cyclical references. This means that we have a loop of references in our application. On a more practical approach, we can have two modules, A and B. 
If module A consumes module B and B consumes module A, then we have a cycle in our hands. This means whenever I publish one of these modules, I will always get a warning letting me know that I need to publish the other one. And this is a never ending loop. There is a way for the warnings to not appear, but we will not teach you this part since cyclical references are very bad for your application architecture and your application lifecycle. The best way to correct this is to move the concepts that are being used between the modules and move them into a new module below them. And we can call this one module A, B. And we can have our original modules A and B consume this module instead of each other. We must not have core entities on our foundation layer. Core entities are placed inside the core layer. Then we must not have business logic on our foundation layer. As we discussed previously, our foundation layer is where we place our most reusable elements that are business agnostic and reusable on any business context. We must not expose entities with full permissions. This means have all exposed entities and exposed entities must be on the core layer with expose read only option turned to yes. We must not have front end screens anywhere but the end user layer. This does not contain the layout screens that are used on the theme. Finally, on the end user layer, we cannot have strong side references between end user modules. On version 11 of OutSystems, screens are considered weak references, so you can reference screens on this layer without creating a cyclic reference. Your project architecture is always evolving. What was defined in the past is not a short answer for new functionalities or business concepts of the future. This is why as our project matures, so must our architecture. Now it's time to apply all these concepts to our current project. Currently we have screens, web blocks, business logic, entities and their crudes and our team. When we are refactoring an application, First, we must identify our concepts and place them inside each corresponding layer and sublayer. Since all our concepts are inside the same module, our goal is to split them into different ones and organize our architecture. When we have entities inside a module, we want to put them in the core layer. The way is to maintain the entities and moving them to a different module will make us lose all the data since entities are directly linked to the module they, are, they were created on. We will not do this in our example since we don't have a lot of data, but for future reference, this is what you should do. Behind the OutSystems entity abstraction, we have a database table. This table has a physical name and this name is linked to the module. If we duplicate the module, we will not duplicate the data inside our entities. The new duplicated module will create the same entity structure on the database table, but this table's physical name will be different. Imagine having two identical houses with different contents inside the house, but you only have the key to enter one of them despite being the same on the outside. So we already know what to do with the original module when we have entities on a normal basis. Keep the entities on this module and move it to the core layer and extract all the elements into different modules. Again, this is not what we are going to do on this example, but this is what you should do when you have data on your tables. Now that we know the layer, we need to place it on the correct sub layer and identify where, the, where to move the rest of the elements. Now let's get our hands dirty. Start by opening the service studio and go to the module previously created. Notice that until now, we have built this module with components from different layers entities, screens, reusable blocks. When we want to optimize our architecture, we need to see things as puzzles and try to isolate them in their corresponding layer and sublayer. As mentioned above, we have three main layers, end user, core and foundation. Before starting the explanation of what layer should each component be placed on, you should pause this video and try it for yourself. I'll give you a tip to start the process is that we want to isolate the data layer from the UI components. So we will only use two layers from now. Do you have any clue on how to do it? Go for it, I'll wait. 
Are you done now? Let's see if you got them correctly. First, we start off by identifying the different components and categorizing them per layer. We can see entities, which should be on the core layer, and UI elements that belong to the end user layer. For this exercise, we will assume that the module already created will be the UI module, so we can just move the entities to another one. As previously mentioned, we can duplicate the module to isolate the entities, but we will go for the traditional way as we were building an application from the scratch. Going deeply into the entities, we can see that the products have a relationship with the suppliers and the transactions, so we can isolate them in a core service module. Although we have shown you how to divide a module with screens and entities into two, now we are going to teach you on how to create one service module from scratch. This type of module is destined to core services and it is not possible to create any UI components on it. We are going to create a new application called From Zero to Hero Core and inside this application detail, click on Add Module button and notice that you need to set the module name and the module type. Since this will be a data module, you can name it from zero to hero CS or underscore CS, meaning that every core service will be gathered on this module. This module will have no front ends, so you can pick the service option on the module type. And this is another hero tip. After that, we will recreate the entities on this module, just like the crude actions that we had on the UI module. Since this is the CS module, and we want to use the crude actions as well as the entities in the UI module, we should set them as public. You can do this by left clicking on the entity or action and set the public property to yes. Also set the expose read only to yes. This will make sure that anyone that wants to create data, your entity must use the crude actions that you have built. So this way they won't use the direct actions made available by the entity. Note that all public elements should have a description so that the consumer has some concept on the elements that he is consuming and the elements purpose. And this is a huge hero tip. Everyone should document their code. It's very important. Don't forget to publish your new module. The core elements of your application are now ready to be used. With the CS module done, we can go to the UI module created on the previous From Zero to Hero episodes and delete all the elements recreated on the core module. This will trigger a bunch of errors and warnings, but fear no more. All you need to do is consume those same elements from the core module. You can do this by clicking on the Manage Dependencies button located on the top part of the platform header. This will open a frame so you can search all the public elements on your environment by module. In the module input, type from zero to hero underscore CS and click on it. Notice that the public elements that you've just created on this module are now being displayed on the right side of the frame. You can now consume those elements by clicking on each one or an aggregation of them and apply and click on the apply button. Can you still see any errors? You shouldn't. If you do, let us know because they should be gone by now. <laughs> click on the publish and you should have now your two module in your two applications done. Congratulations. I hope that you were able to figure out the solution of this puzzle by yourself. In case you didn't, we are here to give you all the tools and all the help that you need so that you can create your own out systems application with a good architecture. This was just an overview. If you want, you have a more detailed architecture series on our channel, please take a look. If you want to keep yourself updated with all our tutorials, and our news, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all our social media. If you have any doubts, please comment on the video. We are here to answer them and help you out. So thank you for watching and see you soon.